Hello, AP environmental scientists. I'm Miss Maycutt from Ballard High School, and I will be debriefing the personal progress check number two with you from the Unit 3 Climate of Hope. So we're going to start going through the questions folks had the most difficulty with, and then we'll go back and go over the remainder of the questions. Key things to think about are deciphering age structure diagrams, replacement level fertility, density dependent versus density independent factors, and the demographic transition models. The first three we're gonna focus on are number one, seven, and 10, and then I'll go back and debrief the rest. The first one we're looking at is number two, which is one of the main concepts of what we've been looking at this week with age structure diagrams. And the question is, what would one of these diagrams look like if we have a population size decreasing due to reducing pre or fewer pre-reproductive aged individuals? And the if we go through these questions, the first one is the correct answer because it's illustrating the declining population size. And you can see it's an inverted pyramid and you have this very clear reduction of overall populations as you go into the lower age groups, into these pre-reproductive ages. Um, B is incorrect because it actually has the potential for rapid growth. Being a bottom heavy pyramid, this big bulge right here is gonna cause a lot of increase in population. Um, and C is incorrect because it's pure, it is pyramidal shaped. I know this little tight spot can be confusing, but if we compare this to the age structure diagram of A, it very distinctly still has room for growth in a growing population. And then D is this, the column. There's a slight decrease, but it's still pretty columnar in its overall shape. So this is not as clearly illustrating a reduction of pre-reproductive. The next question we're gonna focus on is question number seven. Based on the data, when did more developing regions first reach repla replacement level fertility? Well, let's look at the graph first, and you need to focus on which part is more developed. Okay, that's the little square boxes. So we're focusing on this line, and then we look at our options and what the question is asking us. When did it first reach replacement level fertility? Okay, we're replacing ourselves. Replacing yourself with a couple, you've gotta have, you're looking at two. It's actually 2.1. So the closest to 2.1 right here is at 1970, given these 1970, given these options. When you look at A, which is 1950, uh, the numbers are above that two, they're closer to three. So you're gonna have an increasing population. And then in the subsequent C and D, they're both below two. So you're gonna have decreasing population rate. Question number 10, which of the following density independent and factors can affect the size of a human population? So this is going back to density independent versus density dependent factors for um, human population growth. And you just gotta, so density dependent, so things that are um, altered, the amount of population growth altered by whether there's more people or not. And disease, if there are more people, disease spreads more quickly. We have easier access and contact and um, uh, sharing of the vectors that cause the disease. B, availability to food. We are competing for resources. So just think of any animal in an ecosystem, more of us competing for same resources. That's very much density dependent. Heat waves, now we're talking about weather. So. Heat waves are caused by the geological factors, by um, climate and patterns. That is not primarily due to us. Yes, we have had an impact on the increase of overall heat waves due to climate change, but if you compare this with the other questions, heat waves is distinctly um, caused more by factors that are not us. Access to clean water, again, competing for a limited resource, so very much density dependent. So those were the big ones that folks had the most trouble with. Now we're gonna go through the rest of them and I will try and do these a bit more quickly. So question number one, based on the survivorship um, curve below, which of the following is a possible reason for the change in the shape of the curve? 
from 1900 to 1980. Well, what happened between 1900 to 1980? So here to here, the bulge went out. So if we look at that, that means people are living longer, right? So they're living, 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 then dying well closer to like 70s, 80s, um, even into the 90s. What would of these options have the biggest impact on that? Increased immigration? not really going to increase survivorship and reduce mortality. Increased infant mortality? Definitely not. Improvements in healthcare? Oh yeah, that'll help us live longer. And decreased urbanization. Urbanization doesn't give you a clear, distinct um, factor for increasing um, longevity. Number, we already did two, so we're going to jump to three. Uh, which of the following statements best describes the pattern in this age structure diagram? This is the same um, age structure diagram C that we looked at before, but here we're looking at it more closely. And again, process of elimination. And the country has very little difference between the number of individuals in young and old. Well, if you look at the graph, that definitely does imply there's definitely some big differences in age. I'm going to pop down to C most likely has a total fertility rate of less than two. No, because you get these bulges, it's increasing. So that doesn't apply. There are more women than men between the ages of 35 to 49. Well, it goes 35 to 49, definitively not. There's this nice clear bulge of more men between females and with a ratio of 1.5. So we have definitely more men to women. If you look at these values, you can see. So that's the closest answer, these options. On number four, age structure diagrams, again, same set that we saw before, but now we're looking for the stable population with slow or no population growth. And that brings us to that columnar shape that we had been looking at earlier. This one has, of course, declining. This one has the potential for growth. This one is going to have a big bump coming up. This one is the only one that's the most steady. So look for that column. Let's look at question number five. So which of the following best describes the trend seen in total fertility rates for the world population from 1950 to the projected 2040? So we're focused on world population. That is the circles that are filled in. So keep that in mind. You got to watch out for that. And then we're going to go through process of elimination. So total fertility rates fell below carrying capacity. There's nothing here about carrying capacity. And we'd also expect a real, we'd expect that little blip up and then the plummet and then it's stabilizing. So that doesn't fit. Um, fertility rates remain fairly steady from 1970 to 85. Well, let me make sure I'm looking at the right graph. 70 to 85, no, it's declining. Drop to D, total fertility rates are projected to increase slightly from 2000 to 2040. This one is here to catch you because if you look at the boxes, and not the filled in circles, that's exactly what it does. It increases slightly. Just watch that you're looking for the right graph. Total fertility rates declined rapidly from 1960 to 2000. So that's just the watch. It's so easy. You got to watch out that you're staying on the right line and the right graph. Okay, next, based on the data, what was the average number of children born per woman in less developed regions? Again, this is trying to catch you, make sure you're looking at the graph, the right line. Less developed is the open circles. So 1975, oh, 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 right there, go up, 1975. So little, this area right here, a little less than five, right there, 4.7, a little less than five, 1975 for less developed. Next is eight uh, for this question. Um, based on current trends and patterns, which of the following statements predicts how human population will change over the next 50 years? So I popped in this graph just to, as a reminder of where things are going and projected to go and where things have been. And then we're going to again go through the process of elimination again. So amount of available food and drinking water increases. No, that's not happening. Decrease in the number and magnitude of earthquakes and tsunamis. That isn't something that we have any control over um, and what's not anticipated to change significantly one way or the other. Educational and economic opportunities increase for women. That's one of the best ways to reduce population. So, and right now we know it's going to increase. So we're talking about increases in population. 
Then B, as the population density increases, there'll be an increase in disease transmission leading to increased mortality. This we know and are experiencing right now. So more people, more crowding, it's easier for disease transmittal. Number nine, the rule of 70 can be used to determine a population's doubling time. This one you really kind of just need to memorize and it's context, which makes the most sense. Environmental impacts to an individual and a population, rule of 70, um, to determine a population's doubling time, that doesn't relate. Length of time at an individual born, that doesn't relate. Average age of the first reproductive event, no. So really, um, Memorize it, remember population growth rates, that's what we're focused on, um, and try and just keep that in your head as you're going through these. Number 11, statement best describes why birth and death rates are changing in a country that's in phase two. Well, here's a reminder, this is phase two of the demographic transition. So in phase two, birth rates are pretty high. They, they're, they're still in that kind of little mild fluctuations, but they're still pretty high but death rates are decreasing. So we're in stage phase two, day stage two. So individuals have better sanitation and access to clean drinking water so they're living longer. Increasing, if we look at B, increasing birth control would decrease birth rates. C, having a high infant mortality rate. No, because the infant mortality rate is not increasing. Population birth rates staying about the same and death rates are decreasing. And then D, um, population size stops increasing. No, population is distinctly still on the incline. It's increasing. 12, a country um, currently in the second state of the demographic, demographic transition, birth rates of 37.9, death rates at 14.4. Which of the following changes would indicate the country is moving from second stage into third stage? Okay, this is a critical time period, right, in the demographic transition when we've had all sorts of advances, improvements in um, health care, improvements in resources and sanitation, right? And then we're starting to increase the population. We're starting to decrease the birth rate, but it's not there yet and overall population is increasing. So um, we are looking, so if we go through these, birth rate declines to 13.1, that would be a decreasing in population. Birth rate rises, no, because we've seen that the birth rates declined based um, right here, we're having a slight decline. And death rate rises, no, death rates decreasing. So the only option that applies is this birth rate declines to 25 births so we're having a slight decline of birth rates as we're transitioning from two to three, but we are not at, um, you know, zero between death rates and birth rates yet. 13, the demographic transition model describes population change over time as a country becomes more developed. Age structure diagrams on how the population is distributed across age ranges, which are the following. Again, stage two of the demographic transition and we're trying to describe, let me get myself out of the way, um, what the pyramid might look like. All right, so we're in stage two. That means we're looking for a fat pyramid because it's got that bulk coming up. The population um, is the, we're having, we're decreasing the death rate. It's stage two, decreasing the death rate, but the birth rate's staying pretty steady. So stationary age structure, no. There's change happening. The death rate's decreasing. Inverted pyramid, no. The inverted pyramid is when we have decreasing population. Constrictive, I'm not even sure what that asking about that. And then expansive pyramid age structure, so that's that fat pyramid um, coming up. All right, that's a wrap. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you found that helpful. If you have any other questions, talk to your teachers. And... Uh, Good luck, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks.